name is Andrew and I've been a fellow with the Institute for uh, Money, uh, Technology and Financial Inclusion here at UC Irvine for a number of years. And I've spent a lot of those years researching in Cambodia, financial inclusion in Cambodia. When I first got to Cambodia, I thought that saving was a lot like uh, Monopoly. So Monopoly, you spend your time saving money, buying houses, growing the property market, growing your own wealth until you become richer than everyone else. But when I spent time in Cambodia, I started realizing that in low income countries, that's not how it works. People actually save together. And I started seeing that women would meet once a month in these groups where they would talk about their problems with money, what difficulties, what difficulties they were facing, and they would actually pull some of their income from wherever they worked, whether it was a factory or uh, just like a fruit stand or something, and put a little bit of money aside and then decide through bidding who got to take that money home to help them that month. And it taught me that actually saving is not necessarily about being better than other people and buying houses. It's about collectively pulling money to help each other. And that inspired me to create a game to show people this that wasn't Monopoly. Because we're in this capitalist monopoly world and I thought we need a game that shows people it's not all about beating everyone else. Yeah. And that's why we developed Loi Loi the savings game. So Loi Loi means money money in Cambodian. And we developed this as a tool not just to teach people in developing countries how to save but also to teach people in the developed world about how people exist in low income countries. So we put when you play the game, you have eight people around, you all roll a die, you become a character, you have a character card where you decide if you're, you know, a Cambodian woman with three kids or, you know, eight kids or um, you work in a factory or whatever your life uh, is made up of. And then you move around the board, you land on expense squares where you get expense cards, you get asset cards where you can buy like a pig or something to get you income each month, or life event cards where, you know, your house is burning down or there's a, you're getting, you, everyone's getting married, uh, someone's getting married next week, and then you have these monthly meetings where you decide who gets to take uh, that money. So we developed this game and we found it was really successful. So we tested it in Cambodia with uh, Cambodians and they found that yes, this, does ref this game does reflect uh, our life. It reflects the way we come together to share funds uh, to survive, the way we do insurance. So if we have an unexpected event, we can still afford to pay for that. And the way we collectively save and together maybe buy a business uh, after we've saved enough as a group. So this game, why, you might ask, uh, why are we here? If, if this game is already done, we know it works. We're working to license it with financial education providers and also organizations like the UNDP and USAID are interested in using, using this game so people can learn about these savings groups and how it works in the developing world. The reason we are here is to get funding to get out of this box. So this box here, we have a physical game that's awesome, but shipping a box to a village in Ghana or um, a hut in Vietnam or um, a tiny country in South America is very, very expensive to get a physical product there. So we thought that there is a box that everyone around the world has more and more and it looks like this. <laughs> and I was, I was surprised by this because I was once, um, a friend of mine works in Myanmar uh, for Oxfam and we were riding motorbikes all around Myanmar and we came to this tiny, tiny shack at the top of uh, a mountain in Chin State, which is very remote. They don't even have cell phone access yet because Myanmar's only been open to a lot of tourism in like, the last five years. And we had to buy petrol just from like a little Coke you know, a one litre Coke, old Coca-Cola bottle, old glass Coca-Cola bottle, that's where you buy your gas. And we saw that in the middle of nowhere, this kid had an old Samsung phone playing Candy Crush. And we're like, how is this kid in some hut at the top of some mountain with no cell phone access 
playing Candy Crush. <laughs> and we found out that uh, they had at the bottom of the mountain cell phone access, and the mother would go down there, pay $20 for some really old Samsung phone, get it preloaded with a bunch of games, take it back up the mountain so her kid could play Candy Crush. And we thought, hey, there's a way to get this game around the world. So with um, help from funders, we are going to invest money to have a Cambodian game development company who are leading edge and have won awards already, even though they're Cambodian, to build an app version of this game so that we can teach uh, you know, a UNDP worker who's on his flight playing some game on his phone how the savings, group work, savings groups work in low-income communities. We can have world education do their financial education projects around the world just using a tablet or using a phone. And so some young girl in Myanmar can sit in a hut uh, playing the game, learning how to budget her money and how to save for the future to buy a business and have it just as fun as Candy Crush.